So what you see here is pretty much a scene that describes the greatest gift ever given to humanity. So you will see what I'm talking about. We have here the nativity scene. Now we are in the Christmas season and this represents the incarnation of our Lord Jesus. The Word came down and took the flesh like my flesh, like your flesh, became a human being without losing his uh, divinity. And here we have the cross, what happened 30 years or 33 years after his birth, a greatest sacrifice was accomplished to fulfill all the narratives of the Old Testament, all the types of Christ from the Old Testament. And when John the Baptist introduced Jesus to the audience back in Palestine, he looked when Jesus came and declared with a loud voice, He is the Lamb of God that is going to lift, to erase, to take care of the sinfulness of the entire world. And Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit uh, ascended, uh, uh, descended upon him and remained and God told John, the one that you will see the Holy Spirit coming as a dove and remaining, he is my son. So God introduced uh, Jesus, his son, to John, and then the rest is history. And thanks God that has been recorded in the, in the pages of the New Testament. So, to describe the, the greatest gift ever, I, I really, I mean, I need time to unpack that one but uh, I wrote a book and recently was released and published it's called the journey of transformation and this is the way I start the book with this first chapter the extraordinary gift I'm talking about the gift of righteousness the grace of God the living son of God that sacrifice for you and for me when, when we are born in our family, in our biological families, we are born already separated from God. And, you know, this illustrates that I was born, biologically speaking, in the domain of darkness. So, in other words, when I was born, I already sat on this chair, this seat of the enemies of God. So, you and I, all of us, we are born as enemies of God. So, we needed something to happen in our lives in order to become friends. So, what happened, what happened is just, as I said, about 30, 33 years after his birth, Jesus died on a cross on Calvary. And you see here, the cross has two sides. You know, I call that side A and side B. So side A speaks about the death of Jesus. So through his death, we are saved, but also we need a power to live now a new life. And through his resurrected life, we can live for Christ. So we have the cross brings provision not only for our salvation, but also for our progressive sanctification. That means His life now in us as born-again believers, His resurrected life, it's deposited in us. So as soon, I, as soon as I place my faith in the atonement work of Jesus and I invited Him in my heart by faith, the Holy Spirit gave me a new heart, gave you a new heart. And he wrote all of his things on that new heart so I can live for God. And at that point, there was a huge transfer from the domain of darkness to the kingdom of light. So that's a phenomenal stuff. 
to be born as an enemy of God and to end up to be a friend of God. So you see, I would like everybody to see this. The cross, it's an instrument for salvation, but also it's an instrument for sanctification. And the cross is the doorway to the greatest exchange ever from being an enemy to becoming a friend. And that's the greatest gift that God was able to give each and every one of us without compromising His holiness and without ignoring our sinfulness. He found the solutions through Jesus Christ. He gave us the robe of righteousness. So let me illustrate this. Remember the, remember the uh, prophecy in the Old Testament that one of the priests was dressed in uh, filthy clothes and stuff like that and God commanded that all of those clothes would be stripped off? This is exactly what happened to me when I was saved and this is exactly what happened to you when you are saved. Your filthy clothes were stripped off and uh, God dressed you, wrapped you in the robe of righteousness. So this represents the blood of Jesus that was applied over my heart. And obviously I have my heart there. And he wrapped me in the, wrap, in the robe of righteousness. And here are the verses here. Uh, what happened here? Something got flipped. Always sample something. Uh, so the Lord is my righteousness. He wrapped me in the robe of righteousness. So you could go there in Isaiah 61:10, and you see that prophecy being fulfilled. The Lord is our righteousness. You go there on Jeremiah 33:16, and you find those promises from the Old Testament prophecies that were written six hundred years before Christ and were fulfilled when Jesus sacrificed himself on that cross. So now each of you, all of us, are the righteousness of God in him. So imagine that you are as righteous as the Son of God. I know that for a lot of Christians is very difficult to accept, but I decided to accept what is written in the Word of God. Can you say with me, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. So it's not my righteousness, it's His righteousness, but He wrapped me in His righteousness. And that is the greatest gift ever, the gift of righteousness. Mm -hmm.